Hello, this is Craig, and I wanted to come up with a new kind of map-based tactical game, uh, an RPG, the, the tabletop RPG. I was a little sick of map-based games that use hexes and specific distances and a lot of setup, um, so I came up with a fast and uh, fun map-based system that has a lot of complexity hidden beneath that surface. Here's the conceit. You are all playing gargoyles. A gargoyle is simply a person that wears AR goggles. Uh, augmented reality goggles. So it's a person that is in a specific place in reality, just like normal, but he's also got some digital things in the space with him. Uh, that's the conceit, and here's how the game works. Step one is that the GM draws a map of the battlefield. Uh, the map is drawn in pen, and it's just a really simple, quick little, quick little diagram. It's not nothing complex. So here we have a simple street uh, where there is a building over here, so this is an impassable wall. And then there's, there's a curve over he, curb over here, so that's just like a little bit of hash. And then we'll put a car, a parked car, um, just for kicks, right here. Uh, once the GM has done that, then the characters can place each other, can place themselves, and the GM can place the enemies. So uh, I'm actually going to drag this down a little bit because it's a little too high up in the. There we are. So uh, yeah, the characters are physical, therefore they are drawn in pen. So here's character A and the GM controlled enemy character B. And then we're going to go ahead and give character A a digital character C, which is drawn in pencil. Simple enough. So turns are very, very simple round robin style. All the players get to go, then all the enemies get to go, or vice versa. And. Uh, Every time someone gets to go, they have a couple of options. They can take one action per turn. And what they do with that action, they have three options. They have, I guess, uh, more than three options, but they have a few basic options. Uh, one is that they can uh, build the battlefield a little bit more. Uh, when you are in a digital world, you can build digital things. So here is character A building a digital brick wall. Pretty easy. Character B might uh, build a shield, a digital shield, um, or maybe he sets up a uh, a chaff circle where, if he's inside this circle, digital art, digital life forms like character C can't actually see him and can't hit him with stuff. Building up terrain is important because the things you build affect everyone. So if I put this here, if A walks in here, he is now immune to digital uh, objects and. This wall blocks fire in both directions and can be blown down with enough firepower. So building up the map is an important part of every um, battle. So that's one of the things you can do is drop a new uh, drop a new digital life form, whether it's a character or a wall or a special effect, whatever it is, you're changing the battlefield. The next uh, thing you can do is shoot. So if I wanted to shoot character B, I would simply make sure that there was a straight path to him. In this case, there's not. There's a wall in the way. So I would hit the wall instead. Uh, now I've gone ahead and sketched in pencil, and you can do that too if it helps you figure out whether there's a direct line of fire. But this is not a battlefield um, changing thing. I mean, the, the bullet does not remain floating in midair forever. It's just a quick little shot that makes you, uh, that tells us whether or not there's something in the way, and then rolls damage and so on and so forth. The idea is that any point on your surface can draw a line to any point on B's surface, and it has to be a straight line, or as straight as your, your hands can get it. Now the any point to any point thing seems a little bit weird until you figure out what the rules for moving are. If you are going to move, it's very simple. You simply draw another shape that is exactly the, that it borders on your previous shape. So here A has moved one spot. Here A has moved a second spot. There's no B. A has moved a second spot, and A has moved a third spot. Now A can move as far as he wants, but he has to draw a shape connecting him. So A can do this if he'd like. This will uh, really expose him because B can shoot him anywhere on his surface. On the other hand, A can shoot B from anywhere on the surface. So he could do something like this. Uh, so moving is always going to be uh, a trade-off between how far you want to move and uh, how exposed you can stand to be. There is one additional, excuse me, there's one additional rule about moving and that is that ink characters can move through pencil barriers and vice versa. Uh, so 
here, A can move through this wall. No problem, because it's a digital wall. On the other hand, this avatar, this uh, sorry, this agent, this uh, digital agent can't. He's stuck on the wall. He has to move around it if he wants to move. The opposite is also true. The uh, digital characters can move through physical barriers, whereas the physical characters get stuck and have to stop. This is a somewhat important um, mechanic. So now we have shooting, setting up barriers, uh, rather changing the terrain to your advantage, and moving. There's one more thing that makes this game a little bit unusual, and that is the hacking component. The augmented reality reality is supported by nodes that create a mesh network. All of the local nodes calculate uh, what goes on in the augmented reality system. So if there is uh, no node in the area, you can't do any of this digital stuff. Um, and you just have to settle for pounding each other with fists, which is not generally what this game is about. Here are three nodes. Uh, now, on your turn, you can choose to hack a node, which simply means if you have a line of sight on the node, you can write your name next to it. Now, B can't hack this node because there's a wall in the way. We've set up this wall, and, uh, and he can't see this node. If he could hack the node, I've already hacked it, so there'd be a quick hack battle, which is just a die roll. Um, but whoever owns the node has a huge advantage. Their team can pretend that someone is a step earlier than they actually are. Let me explain by simply diagramming it. Character A decides he's going to move up to character B, like this. He moves a long way. Now normally, character B could just go, okay, well, I'm going to shoot his ass. However, character A owns a node, so he can say, well, I'm lagging out, this hasn't happened yet, I'm actually back here, your bullet misses. Character B can be clever, and he can try and shoot character A such that his bullet passes through both positions. However, in this case, there's a wall in the way, so he'd hit the wall. This is the kind of calculation that makes the geometry of the map very, very critical. Now, this, is, can, this can be used for more than simply uh, uh, defending yourself against enemy fire. For example, here B decides he's going to hide behind the car. Now, the car is a barrier, so if I wanted to shoot B, I'd hit the car and I wouldn't be able to hit him. On the other hand, if I wanted to, uh, so let's say this guy's shooting B. On the other hand, since we, our team owns this, we can roll back. We can say, well, B is lagging, so he can actually, he's actually here. Now, if we owned two of these nodes, we could actually shoot them all the way back here if we'd like. Um, this is a lot of fun because it takes into account where you've been as well as where you are. And that's the reason that we use these weird inkblot methods rather than just, say, sliding a coin around. Uh, the lagging is incredibly important in uh, larger battles with larger battlefields. Uh, as you have more than two or three characters on a side, it starts to become really quite complex. But it's not complex in a rule-based way. It's complex in a simple geometric way that is built by the characters as the game proceeds. Um, there's also stats behind it. Shooting B doesn't d isn't just a, a random hit. It's not one hit against B. Uh, you're shooting him with a specific thing, and it does a specific kind of damage. Uh, and there's also uh, things like autonomous relays, so or autonomous agents. So, for example, if C is just a missile carrier, C might fire on B automatically every turn. So B has to always be careful to keep something between him and C, or to take C out. Um, otherwise, he'll get pounded continuously every turn, and that's independent of whatever A is doing, even though A owns C. So you get a lot of these kinds of um, combinations of geometric and turn smudging sort of situations where what happens next turn depends on where you were last turn and uh, where you put the wall depends on whether or not your enemy can roll back and lag you far enough that the wall no longer protects you um, and you know you can have lag wars where you lag yourself back a step further than the uh, than the enemy character intended you to be lagged back um, there's a lot of options, and there's a lot of complexity behind this fairly simple rule system. And it's all about just drawing on a piece of paper. There's no rulers, no grid, no complex pre-setup. 
I thought maybe it was kind of interesting. I thought I would see whether anyone thought it might be interesting. And uh, that's it.